nearly two minutes of opening credits that prepare you for the end of this movie before it even begins. Remember 1985 when you could proudly display Mel Gibson's name on a movie with exciting music? Now when you think of his name, you practically hear the music for Schindler's List. Does that say Tina Turner? Every step that you take could be your final one. Oh, okay, Tina Turner's credited because of this song. Phew, she's not actually acting in the movie after all, right? Right? It required two directors to wrangle the ego of Mel Gibson. They never let poor Rudolph play in any camel games. Also, Mad Max has been dealing with this post-apocalyptic bullshit for two other movies, and he's somehow not on alert for thieves and can't hear airplanes as they approach? I guess the woman this guy was dating in The Road Warrior agreed to breed with him. My question is, why? Take your kid to work day. North by Max West. Monkey knows its master needs footwear, so he pushes convenience off the cart. I guess Mel Gibson was William Wallace ten years before Braveheart. In case you confused it with jacked up prices you have no choice but to pay town. H2O, that's my go! This movie is basically the opposite of Waterworld. Waterworld is a discount opposite this movie. Complete with the guy in an umbrella hat. <laughs> Damn, this guy's cart is so radioactive it's amazing everyone who goes near it hasn't gotten instant cancer or superpowers. Discount Kevin Spacey with a discount future Michael Jackson mask. The guards here have no long-range weapons, and go through so much of that Raiders of the Lost Ark shit that whoever they're trying to protect would be dead before they got finished showing off. Later, Max will have to give up his guns before he goes further into Barter Town. Maybe they should have the gun check before they get to this point, right? Okay, that's all the weapons, I promise. No need to pat me down for hidden ones, because clearly I only had room for ten guns. Homoerotic elevating. Diaper saxophone. Oh god, they gave her a speaking role. Also, either Tina Turner is distracting me during this Mad Max movie, or this Mad Max movie is distracting me from Tina Turner. Either way, I'm damn distracted, damn it. The director said, let's have you eat an apple to start a fight. It'll make you look like even more of an asshole. The fate of Kevin Spacey Michael Jackson mask guy is left to the imaginations of the audience. It looks like he falls down into a hole or something, but there's no hole to fall into. So I am confused. Congratulations. You're the first to survive the audition. Man, the other people who tried this must have been really bad at fighting. Also, how many people have actually gotten this far? Max had to threaten the collector and shoot this one guard's hair before he was even allowed up here. So how bad is security in the bartering place? Oh, he did fall down into that open area there. And he survived. Key aspects of this room were only revealed to us just now. Up to my armpits and blood and sh Tina's character slips into describing Tina's real-life marriage with Ike. Call it Underworld. Roll credit. Oh, wait. That's where Buttertown gets his energy. What, oil, natural gas? Pigs. Jesus, how vague are you going to be until you finally tell us the energy comes from pig shit? Master Blaster. They're a unit. They even share the same name. The little one is called Master. Okay, look, I'm fine with calling this guy Master Blaster, but don't tell me that one guy is named Master and the other one Blaster when you just told me they share the same name. That's like calling them Brangelina or Benifer and saying they share the same name. Is this the first time Master Blaster noticed the big periscope spying on them down here? You can shovel sh can't you? Well, the movie certainly can. Sh factory. How long are you in for? The big one? Life? <laughs> that is funny. It's a class job. One mistake. It'll blow the crap out of this place. Literally. Think! What to do? This is the brains of the operation? I'll disconnect the battery. I wouldn't do that if I were you. There's no world in which Mad Max could hear this conversation in a loud pig shit factory. Especially when he couldn't hear that plane that stole his stuff earlier. Me, master! Me, run barter town! Oh, sure, that's why you're living. Max is allowed to be a smartass in this situation. Me, King Arab! That's racist. Bull, run, barter town! Master Blaster. Master Blaster? Even though Master Blaster has embargoed the power many times, and has made her admit who runs the town many times, he makes Auntie say this over the loudspeaker this time. Probably because Max is in the plot now. <laughs> luckily, Master Blaster has a horrible weakness when it comes to high-pitched noises, and Max brought his whistle with him, which was luckily pushed out of the carriage by the monkey earlier in the movie. Thunderdome. So, everything beyond Thunderdome is basically this city, right? It sounds cool when you hear the title, but it's basically just a way to say Barter Town. Two men enter, one man leaves. Crowd has to remind themselves of the one rule Thunderdome has. It's the man with no name! So I guess Max is the good, Auntie is the bad, and Master Blaster is the ugly. Where's Eli Wallach when you need to settle this shit? You gotta admit, this is a horrible way to enjoy sports. Bartertown built an entire murder cage, but couldn't build decent seating to watch the fight. Max avoids an unavoidable spike. Seeing that the spike thing didn't work just that one time, Blaster decides to go for the much more difficult jumping on Max technique to kill him. I just want everyone to know that this movie's entire plot rests on a monkey throwing some shit out of Max's carriage at the beginning. One of those things was a lucky whistle that just happens to be Blaster's weakness. Morals. No! No! Look at his face! How the f did Master get inside Thunderdome? No more methane! This place finished!
I know you're arrogant, but couldn't you wait until you got outside the Thunderdome and back into the underworld before making this threat? No! <laughs> no, no. No. Two men enter! One man leaves! Yeah, but what does this mantra actually mean when a third man runs inside? I'm still trying to figure out how he even got in there. I mean, he's small, but he's not Thunderdome hole small. Right or wrong, we had a deal. And the law says, bust a deal. Face the wheel. Which is an offshoot of Article 6, Section 302 of the Bartertown Law, He Who Smelt It, Dealt It. <laughs> Jesus, do these assholes have to chant every law? One of the places this wheel can land on is a spin-again choice. Considering that none of the choices on this wheel are good, why even bother with that shit? Or is it a joke? Damn, it might be a joke. All our lives hang by a thread. This asshole is like the Chuck Woolery of Bartertown. Wait, they dragged this wheel all the way in here? What the hell for? How did this mother even fit through the door? Did they assemble it inside? The putting of the dude into the gulag ceremony must wait for daytime, and yet all spectators from the previous night's Thunderdome fight will still be interested enough to show back up and spectate again. I know the movie doesn't respect this character, but it's beginning to feel like the movie doesn't even respect this actor. What is this tunnel for? No one really knows, but it comes in super handy when you need to send a monkey out to run errands. Movie inspires future Canadian pop star douchebag on how to best ditch his monkey. Now, with its world-renowned tracking skills, monkey will find a guy riding on a horse through the desert with a 12-hour head start. I don't understand. The punishment wheel landed on gulag which is a prison camp or a forced labor camp in the Soviet Union, but they basically banished him, hoping he would die, I guess. This is mighty disrespectful of a wheel for which you have created a chant. How did the prisoner guy who sent the monkey get that sweet, sweet H2O in a wineskin inside the pig prison? Thankfully, this desert wasteland gulag punishment also contains a fairy rescue godmother. Anne Heche was 16 when this movie came out, so Anne Heche is a discount this chick. It's him. I find it him. You mean you were actually looking for Max? And he has some sort of history with your tribe that will confuse us and him for the next 10 minutes? Ah, a society of creepy children! Damn, Max is in such bad shape his clothes turn blue. Hair theft. <laughs> Damn, falling out of the hospital must happen so much they tie ropes around patients' legs just in case. Maybe the hospital shouldn't be in such an elevated position. I don't know. Fly, Walker, fly! Discount Lost Boy thinks he's actually in Peter Pan. Emu hat. Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome decided, you know what, the Ewoks weren't so bad. Let's do our own Ewok scene without the Ewoks. Remember this? <laughs> I have a feeling I'll be screaming with delight about this movie in two weeks. I even plan on asking for my ticket this way. One ticket to Tomorrow Morrowland, please. And much like the people in this movie worship the flying bird known as an airplane, we will worship Brad Bird in all his magnificence. Man, I hope that movie is good, or this sin won't seem like a sin at all. So this tribe thinks Max is Captain Walker, based on almost nothing except I found a rando dude in the desert and he's white. A crazy wind starts blowing so that this entire tribe can get excited about Captain Walker's airplane, and Max can reveal to these kids there's no Santa Claus a second time. Damn, I'm jealous. To be completely fair, these kids are probably eating apples for much needed nourishment, but they're still kind of assholes. The first place you'll find is a sleaze pit called Bartertown. Now if the earth doesn't swallow you up first, that place sure as hell will. We are beyond Thunderdome here, people. Max punches this woman because she wants to leave this place. Sure, he's saving her life, but this is her choice, man. You've gone from not caring about anybody in the last movie and the beginning of this movie to all of a sudden caring what people do. This is against his character, but yay for the punchy hero. Also, that's racist. How does Max expect these people to keep Savannah tied up for the rest of the night? As soon as he falls asleep, somebody sympathetic is going to weigh the loyalty of knowing someone all their life against knowing someone for three hours. I need as much water as I can carry. It's not going to be easy defeating freedom of choice, but goddammit, I will go to the ends of the earth to do it. Movie tries to challenge Lawrence of Arabia's record for walking in the desert scenes. Well, now they've experienced firsthand two of the great dangers of the fire swamp. Where are the others? Out there. Wait a minute, so these other kids went into the underworld where they have no clue what the situation is with no plan or anything? It's a wonder these guys aren't dead already. This guy manages to hit all the non-target space around his target. Well, somebody saw Star Wars. Oh yeah, Tina Turner's in this movie. I completely forgot, since we've been beyond Thunderdome for 40 minutes now. Also, oh no, my incredibly bizarre punishment didn't work. I'm going to have to take the wheel's name in vain now. Wheel, damn it! Now that I've got you where I can kill you, time to gloat for a second so you can get saved. To me. The fact anyone hears her. So wait, there are perfectly good train tracks still intact after all these years? General Nature would have taken care of this, not to mention all the thieves looking to profit from the metal they could steal. What kind of post-apocalypse is this? Welcome. Open your book at page one. I assure you that even if this record player could still play records, that the record it's playing would definitely not sound like this. It's warped, cracked, and dirty. It would sound worse than the HAL 9000 when that dick astronaut pulled his memory cards. The last time we saw this guy, he did a Biff Tannen into a tub of pig shit. 
So when did he have a chance to clean that off? This cow car is straight out of Death Race 2000. Now, see, this car chase action set piece is what everyone who came to see this movie expected to see. Only they were expecting it before the final 15 minutes. And probably neither expected nor wanted the hour and a half Peter Pan Blue Lagoon bullshit they just sat through. This guy got rammed into by a train, and there was a fiery explosion shortly after that. The fact that Iron Bar is still alive makes me angry. Max steals an entire human being from Auntie as if she were Jim McMahon handing off to Walter Payton. This cat is on his 12th life already. Also, maybe there's a time where you decide, you know what, I don't need this Michael Jackson accessory anymore. Even when it should be burned completely beyond recognition at this point. <laughs> Sudden Bridge shows up out of nowhere. Now, come on. Even Fast Five knew to show us when a bridge was coming up, as ridiculous as that movie is. This is a stick up! Oh, f you little kid. How did you get out here and build that mound of dirt in time to stop the train? Even if you flew out here, you didn't have the time, unless you have mounds of dirt just lying around for this occasion. Wait, are we now to believe that they built a mound of dirt just on the off chance that someone would run a train on it again? And the kid was outside just waiting for that very thing to occur? Also, this is perfect timing. His dad has a plane and can save the day. Airplane that is built for small cargo will now be able to fit eight extra people and become a clown car when it comes to space. Max was the last one on this plane, but he managed to slip by seven other people in tight quarters to get right behind Jebediah. Movie thinks we like this guy so much, we'll be thrilled every time he shows up after clearly dying in a previous scene. Even if he didn't die, I don't know how he caught up to the rest of Andy's crew. Don't worry, Iron Bar. I'm sure you're okay after that. How does that create a clear, flat runway surface? Wait, if he can take off there, why did Max need to crash his truck? What the f*** is going on? Iron Bar's middle finger is not to Max, but the audience. Well, well ain't we a pair, raggedy man. That's it? You went from no mercy to ha-ha, well, you ruined my city, but damn it, I respect you? This you know, the years travel fast. Epilogue narration. Your very own brand oh. new camel! Watch out, they spit! Wasteland. He's bad. He's beautiful. He's crazy. It's the Amazing Spider-Man. <laughs>